welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 9th. First up, this was sent in by 1954 Shadow. If, like me, some of you have seen the movie Matrix, especially the first one, one of the um, themes of the movie was that the machines took over and used human beings as human batteries. We were basically just generating heat to power the machines. That was the premise in Matrix 1. Well, right now, this comes from ZeroHedge.com in Japan. The Matrix is now reality as humans are used as living batteries. Fuji Film, along with, let me get the other place right, Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, also known as AIST, have developed this resin type of uh, sheet that when put next to the body, it uses the temperature difference between your body's temperature and the outside air temperature to generate electricity. And in the future, they could use this for like linings and jackets or just um, linings and different vests and stuff like that and use your own body heat to keep your devices charged up. I think that's a pretty cool idea here. Uh, it seems rather flexible and it seems ready to uh, maybe come to market here it looks like or at least fairly soon and next up this is also from 54 shadow thanks for sending two of these in for me this is from usnews.com implant makes mind reading possible in rats what they did was they took two different rats and two different sections of the I think even these are in diff two different continents possibly let's see what uh, yeah, between ac across continents, what they did was they sent the brain waves from one rat. They trained this rat based on visual cues to press the correct lever, and the rat in the other location gets no visual cues, but it also gets the brain, but it, uh, it uh, gets instead the brain waves, a copy of the brain waves from the rat that's getting the visual cues, and the rat on the other end had a 70% success rate using only the, the brain waves of the, other, of the other rat, and they're going to start this test on monkeys as well. Kind of like the uh, predecessor steps to possibly the Borg type of deal with human beings. And next up, this is a movie that's coming out um, in spring, so it should be about any time now. It's called The Best Bar in America. Thank you, Phil Cuca, writer, for sending this in. Uh, looks possibly to be maybe as good of a uh, movie as the world's fastest Indian. One of those type of movies where if you have a friend that's not really into biker movies so much, they still would appreciate the movie. It's about a guy traveling across the U.S. on a 1960s classic BMW and just uh, exploring the bars and stuff like that. I'm not really so much into the bar scene myself, but I know if you make a good movie and you get good character development and... Uh, it's not boring that it can end up being a good movie even if you're not exactly into the subject matter and since I do like classic bikes uh, this might end up being a movie worth catching I haven't seen any schedule lately of it being released in a theater near me so I'm guessing it's still maybe a month or two off but might be something interesting to check into and last up this comes from I actually got this off of Facebook and it's a page called Milky Way Scientist Photos we may have a chance this year, if you get out at the right time and you have the right visual conditions, to see another, um, to see actually two comets coming nearby. This one's going to be between March 12th and March 24th for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere. I guess uh, right now the Southern Hemisphere views are coming to an end, but if you have an unobstructed view of the West just after sunset, and especially if you can have binoculars with you, but be very careful, make sure the sun is completely set, look off to the area of the sunset and slightly to the left and high, just a little bit above the horizon, you're going to see this comet called Panstar on March 12th. Around March 16th, 18th, and 20th, it's going to be pretty much directly over the sunset, and then it's going to drift slightly to the right. So it'll be moving from the 12th to the 24th from left to right and getting dimmer and dimmer. Uh, they say as it approaches the March 24th, you may have to have binoculars to be able to see it. But this time we'll be able to see um, possibly two comets this year. I actually talked about the other comet before that we are going to be able to see uh, a little bit later. But this one's called Panstar, and that's because it's it was discovered by the Panoramic um, Star Observation, something like that. I don't have the exact name, but it's the uh, telescopic telescopic array that actually discovered this comet so if you get a chance go out there and take a look and check it out maybe something kind of cool to see if I'm I got to be able to move to a different location where I am to possibly see it but if the weather's decent I'm gonna actually give it a shot so anyway that's it for this week everybody you guys take care and I will catch you next week <music>